Hi, I'm Whitney Espick, the CEO of the MIT Alumni Association, and I hope you enjoy this digital production created for alumni and friends like you. OK, so hello, everyone. My name is Dina Kitabi. I'm a professor here at MIT in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. And what I want to talk to you about is healthcare and how technology, and particularly AI, can help. Now, I don't have to tell you guys that healthcare in the US is a big disaster. And we all know that. It costs about $3 trillion. But what is interesting is that two thirds of that cost is about chronic diseases. Chronic diseases like congestive heart disease, COPD, Parkinson, et cetera. Now, one thing that is very interesting about chronic diseases, of course, is that it touches almost everyone. It touches me, it touches you guys, in the sense that every one of us has either a parent or a, um, a relative who has chronic diseases. In particular, my aunt, about a few months ago, she, uh, she was rushed to the hospital. She has congestive heart disease, and she had an exacerbation. She was rushed to the hospital. Luckily, she, she's fine. She's now back at home. But the key point is that such exacerbations in congestive heart disease and other chronic diseases, they don't happen overnight. They are actually gradual. So if, just if, if we have the ability to monitor chronic diseases at home and monitor various physiological signals, then we can detect that cumulative degradation in the physiological signals and alert the doctor so that they can intervene prior to the patient in the, in the hospital. And we know that with that, we can potentially avoid multiple hospitalization and, of course, improve outcomes for the patients. So I want you to imagine with me the future home, a home that can monitor the health of its occupants, that can monitor breathing, heartbeat, sleep, physiological signals. And if there is a problem, before that problem exacerbates, it will alert the doctor. Now, of course, this is a great and interesting vision, but you might be wondering, just like, how are we going to do this? Today, actually, monitoring health at home is cumbersome. So just think about it. If you want to monitor breathing, for example, you need to ask the person to wear a chest band or a nasal probe. If you want to monitor something like uh, mobility in Parkinson or multiple sclerosis, you are asking the person to wear these accelerometers on their legs and move with them. Uh, if you want to monitor falls, you ask the person to wear a pendant and push a but button when they fall. And if you want to monitor sleep, then you ask them to wear all of these electrodes on their head and sleep with them. So this is cumbersome and intrusive and is going to be not acceptable to ask chronic disease patients to, to wear all of these sensors. But what if somebody comes and tells you that we can monitor all of these things and many more things without asking the patients to wear any sensor on their body or charge anything or change their behavior in any way? This is exactly what I do in my group. We invented a new modified Wi-Fi box. So you can think about it as a much more intelligent uh, smart Wi-Fi box that sits in the background of the home, and it can monitor breathing, heartbeat, sleep, mobility, falls, and other things without any sensor on the person's body. Now, how do we do that? How can we monitor your breathing, your heartbeats, without touching you from a distance? So at a high level, it works as follows. You guys are all sitting here. You are in, in a sea of wireless signals. So there is Wi-Fi, there is cellular, there is plenty of RF signals around you. Now, every single move that you do, you lift your arm like this, it changes the electromagnetic waves. You take a breath, it changes the electromagnetic waves. Even the pulsing of your blood changes the electromagnetic waves around you. And what we did is to augment our devices with machine learning algorithms that are particularly customized to analyze the electromagnetic waves to extract from them physiological signals, breathing, heartbeat, motion, etc. 
So I want to show you a few videos, but let me start with an illustrative video. So here you see a home and wireless signals go around, they traverse walls, and they reflect off the human body because our bodies are full of water. And these signals come back to the, our device that's going to analyze them using machine learning. In this case, it detects a fall and alerts the caregiver via text, email, or a phone message. I want to show you some of the experiments from our lab. So this is my student, and this is a, the, an office in the computer science lab. Our device is not even in the same room. It is in the adjacent office. So we want to monitor this person through the wall from the adjacent office using wireless signals. So this red dot that you see here on the side is where the device thinks this person is standing right now. Now, let me play this for you. Now, notice how the red dot is tracking his motion. And remember, this is without any sensor on his body. He's not wearing a wristband, a cell phone, nothing. Pretty accurate, just purely based on how his body interacts with the surrounding electromagnetic waves. And if he falls, we can detect that too. So what you see this blue line going to the floor level indicating a fall. Because the same way as we can monitor in the XY, we can actually monitor the elevation. So if you think about it, this is actually quite helpful and useful. So there is this metric that is called gait speed or habitual walking speed. And basically our bodies and the way we walk is indicative of our health and doctors know that. And our walking is a predictor of the risks of falling. So not only we want to, predict, to detect a fall, but we want to predict the fall also based on change in, changes in gait and gait speed. And this gait metric is also related, of course, to motion disorders, uh, neurological diseases such as Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, and also muscle wasting. And it turned out that it's actually even a predictor of things that you think are not related to motion, like congestive heart disease, like my aunt, what happened to my aunt, or COPD, which is a pulmonary disease. Today, to measure that gait speed, the patient goes to the doctor clinic, and the doctor is using a stopwatch, and there is a standard test that's called the six-minute six walking test. They ask the patient to walk and come back, and they are using the stopwatch. Imagine being able to measure that continuously in the patient's own home all the time. And we can do this, but we can do actually more than that. Here's another thing that we can do, sleep. Actually, sleep is very important, particularly to me. My sleep is a disaster. And after doing this research, I discovered it's even worse than I thought. <laughs> so you can, you can imagine probably why we can get a form of sleep, because the, the device sees a person as he's walking to bed when he stops tossing around in bed when he steps out of bed. So that's a measure of sleep based on ectigraphy, which is motion. But we can actually measure sleep at much finer level. So when we go to sleep, our brain waves change, and we enter different stages, awake, light sleep, deep sleep, and REM, rapid eye movements. And these stages are not just associated with sleep disorders, they are also associated with a variety of diseases. For example, REM and disturbances in REM can be indicative of depression. And disturbances with deep sleep can be also indicative of Alzheimer's because during deep sleep, this is a time when we consolidate memory. So today, if you want to monitor sleep staging, what do you do? You send the person to a sleep lab and they put all of these electrodes on their body and they ask you to sleep like this. <laughs> and it's not a happy experience. Anyone who has done it probably realizes that it's very hard to sleep like this. So what if somebody tells you that we can monitor these sleep stages in the person's own home, own bedroom, without any of these electrodes on the person's head? So let me show you. This is our device on the wall and transmit very low power wireless signal 
and uses internally machine learning algorithm to spit out the sleep stages throughout the night. So it knows when this person is dreaming. So we can also monitor breathing. So you see this person sitting there, like you guys are sitting. Uh, he, this, what you see is his inhales, exhales. So this is his inhale, exhale motion. And we ask him to hold his breath, and you see the signal stays at steady level because he exhaled, he did not inhale. I want to zoom in on the signal a bit. So this is the same signal that I just showed you. These are the inhales. These are the exhales. And these blips that you see on the signal, these are actually not noise. They are his heartbeats. So you can see them. You can even count the beats. So one common thing that people ask me when I present to them this technology, they ask whether you can monitor multiple people at the same time in the same environment. Just to show you this, so in this video, what you see, we are monitoring the breathing of the first student. Another person enters the room. The device detects the second person, zoom in on him, and start monitoring his breathing as well. So in my group, we are very excited about using this technology, and particularly, as I said, in the field of chronic diseases and helping patients. And we actually have started working with multiple medical doctors in various disease categories. So we already have device, devices that are deployed with patients that have Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, depression, and pulmonary diseases, such as COPD. And I want to show you just a few examples from, uh, so all the examples that I showed you before were, were with students who are healthy individuals. So now I'm going to show you some of the examples from the deployment. So this is a deployment in an assisted living. And this is the unit of the patient. And you can see at the top there, the green rectangle is our device. And the red dot here is the patient. The red dot here is the nurse. And I want you to see the difference between the movement of a patient versus the movement of a nurse. So you see the patient moving slowly and wiggly, while the nurse's movement is much smoother and faster. So it's not just that the patient is slower, but the patient also is more wiggly in his motion. So this is a result from uh, a deployment with a Parkinson patient. Now, you probably know Parkinson is a neurodegenerative disease that affects the way people move. And what you see here is on the uh, y-axis is the walking speed of the patient. On the x-axis is the hour in the day. And these are averaged over several days. So you see, interestingly, that there is this point here where the walking speed of the patient increases. So at 5 or 6 AM in the morning, the patient suddenly can walk much faster. And guess what? This is exactly the time when he takes his medications. So you can monitor the impact of medications. And particularly, this is interesting in Parkinson's disease, because Parkinson patients are very different from one to the other. So you can use that to adjust the dose that you are giving to the patient to make sure that the, the medication is not wearing off too soon. So this is the same graph, but from the wife, the spouse of this patient. And you can see that the gait does not have the same effect of increasing at a specific point. It's more steady throughout the day. This is a breathing signal of someone who has apnea. So you see at the beginning of the person breathing, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, and then suddenly they stop breathing. This is an apnea event. And again, he's breathing, and then he stops breathing, and again, breathing and stops breathing. In fact, this is uh, in an assisted living, uh, with a patient who lives in an assisted living place. And we were asked to monitor the patient because he's unable to sleep and he keeps wandering around. But when we monitor him without, again, any sensors on his body, we discover that he has sleep apnea, very severe sleep apnea. And indeed, the doctor sent him to the sleep lab to confirm because today 
to get the CPAP and to get the, the insurance to pay, he has to, to send him to the sleep lab. So they confirmed the same thing. Okay, so let me end with that. Basically, we are very excited about how technology can help advance healthcare. And there is so much potential, particularly, as I said, in chronic diseases. We can use AI to monitor and understand signals without actually cumbering on overwhelming the patients with having to wear too many sensors or change their behavior in any way. Uh, and this is my email address in case you are interested in any more information. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. And for more information on how to connect with the MIT Alumni Association, please visit our website.